pulled up on them. They was together. Did y'all know about this? I cannot believe this. He was tracking her whereabouts through her iPhone. And he's banging the gun on the car. Like, open up. I just want to talk to you real quick. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. What's up, Team Jazzy? It's your girl, Jazzy J Eats. And I am back with another month. So today's true crime is about Cain and Abel happen again. If you guys are familiar with the Bible and Bible stories, it was two brothers who um, ended up, it ended real bad. That's what I'm going to say. So I don't spoil today's true crime, but yeah, it's basically about two brothers who fell in love with the same woman and it ended in a deadly family feud. I am also going to be eating on some homemade Taki ramen noodles. I put the recipe in my short, so make sure you guys go and check that out if you're interested in this recipe. This was, I got this from Nikocado Avocado with his crazy self, he's so entertaining. But I got this recipe from him and um, it didn't look too tasty, but I've had Takis before, so I'm like, let me just try this out. And I ain't gonna hold you, I kinda tasted it a little bit and it's really good. It's actually good, cause I made it the sauce out of cheese Where's my, y'all, is it even a video if I don't forget something? I'm always forgetting something. All right, and we back. I call all of my subscribers Team Jazzy, so if you would like to be a part of the team, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and turn your post notifications on so that you never miss another video. Give this video a big thumbs up just because I said so. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I'm gonna pray so I can eat it. Hey, Team Jazzy, wanna get to know me better? Keep up with me on a personal level by joining my membership. All you have to do is click join beside the subscribe button. I'm so excited to share some exclusive content outside of true crimes. Love you. Amen. Ever since I was sick, my scream ain't been right. Have y'all noticed that? Cause I noticed that. All right, let's try this. I tasted the cheese already and it's really good. And I use Raymond noodles, but you can use any other noodle. Uh, next time I'm probably gonna use spaghetti noodle because it doesn't break up. Ramen noodles, if you cook 10 seconds over the time, then they break up. Like you can't get like a thick, you know, you can't get like a lot of noodles on one fork. Mmm, this is so good. It's just like, it tastes like cheesy noodles. And then I have crumbs of the Takis. These Takis, I have the crumbs on them. And it's really, really good. You taste like the, you taste the flavor of the Taki and you taste the cheese and you taste the texture of the noodles. So it's a, it's a very interesting and good mixture. Mm. This is really good. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I left the crumbs over here. So are you guys eating with me? What are y'all eating? I need to add crumbs with each bite. A whole bunch of crumbs with each bite is really good. Don't knock it till you try it. It's blue, which I know a lot of kids is gonna wanna try this, but this is a really good meal to make with your kids at least. I wish Angel and DJ was here. I want some more crumbs. <laughs> This is good. And I'm hoping it's probably, I think it already did. Oh my God. 
because there's blue dye in the cheese. <laughs> so I'm like, I hope it doesn't turn my teeth blue. I think it already, I feel like my mouth is blue. I can't tell this far back. It's good. Yummy. That ice cold water be hitting. All right, Kane and Abel. Their names is Joe and Tony. But they lived in a small town and <clears throat> they were farmer boys. The whole town was like farmer boys. And Tony had a girlfriend named Brooke. Brooke was eight years younger than Tony. Tony was 30, but they met when Brooke was a teenager. So y'all know me. Two red flags. He's eight years older than her and he a grown man and she's a teenager. I seen this post that was like, um, to the young girl that's dating the older guy, he doesn't like you because you are mature. He likes you because the women that's his age see the bum in him. Now I'm not calling this man a bum. I'm just saying I, that's the post that I read. And it just reminds me of this situation. It reminds me of every young girl that thinks, cause I thought it too, when I was younger, you would just, you think that an older man, I don't know what we be thinking y'all. I, I can't make it make sense, okay? We just, something about an older man, we be like, ooh, like it makes us think we're higher than what we are, but really it's, it's a sign of a control thing. And there is some men that really fall in love and they're genuine and they have that they're 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 healthy and they're not going to play any narcissistic games with a younger girl. But that's rare. Okay? Okay, moving on. We not we, we not about to don't get me started. Don't get me started. So, what do you know? After some time have went on, he became abusive to her. It was more verbally abuse than physical abuse, but it was still abuse. Abuse is abuse, okay? It's still all bad in my eyes. Okay, if y'all make this, oh my God, that looks nasty. If y'all make this, wear gloves because my nails are so blue, it looks like dirt is under my nails. So yeah, homeboy was controlling. He ain't want her to go nowhere. He ain't even want her to work. He was like... You better work from home. And she's just like, dag on. Like, and um, anytime she did go somewhere, he knew exactly where she was at because he was tracking. He was tracking her whereabouts through her iPhone. So after so much, Brooke couldn't take it no more. She left him. She filed an order of protection from him. So that he can't come around. And she was she was really starting to get scared because he would threaten her all the time. Whenever they argue, he would threaten her and be like, If I can't have you, nobody can have you. You ain't going nowhere. I'll kill the nigga that one. I mean, he didn't say the N word. <laughs> Y'all know I get in the character. <laughs> he was like, I'll kill the person that ends up with you. He always said that. And so she ended up getting a protection order against him because she like, I don't know what he's capable of. And we have a son together. Yes, they had a son. And it was at this point, it was like, I need to protect me and my baby. So the day that Tony finds out that he has a uh, order of protection against him, he is so, so upset. 
He in a parking lot screaming at her, yelling to see his son. How dare you take my son away from me? I'm going to kill whoever you with. Like, he's so insecure. He's like, if you don't want to be with me, it must be, be because of another man. Like, he looked past the fact that he is disrespecting her and nobody wants to tolerate that. Nobody's going to accept that for the rest of their life. So his big brother, Joe, who is 40 years old, Joe is the oldest. His brother, Joe, reached out to Brooke because he's like, you got my nephew. And this is not right. <laughs> you got my nephew. And, you know, I just want to make sure y'all good. I want to help you get on your feet. And that was a nice gesture, right? So Brooke is like, okay. And so Joe started helping Brooke and Brooke is like, this is a familiar face. It's my son's nephew. I know that he's going to protect us. He's so different than his brother. He is more of a protector than an abuser like his brother. And they fell in love and yeah, they fell in love and they even posted pictures. Now, I wouldn't have did that, you know? Like, you know, you, you, you can help who you love by setting boundaries over logical things. Like, you're my boyfriend's brother. No, you can't spend a night. Or, you know, you could pick up when somebody's flirting on you. But she let some things slide because she didn't have boundaries and she fell in love. And that right there is already a lot. I, I wouldn't have posted anything, but... They was like, I don't care. Love love make you do some crazy stuff. Like post pictures when you in love with your brother's girlfriend. And they posted pictures together. And when Tony saw that, he was like, what? Like, so he started texting his brother's friends and was like, did y'all know about this? I cannot believe this. He's with my ex-girlfriend. I'm sorry. It's killing me inside to think of them being together. I got to kill him. I got to kill him. Is what he's telling his brother's friends. So one day, to, so one day, Tony talking to his mom was like, yeah, me and, me and Joe, you know, we, we trying to link up and chop it up and go have some drinks at a bar. Um, but I need a, he and I answering, you know where he at? And the mom is like, oh, yeah, sweetie, he had such and such and such and such. She, he like, okay, cool. Pulled up on them. They was together. He, they were in the same, uh, they were on the same street inside of their cars. And one was going this way and the other was going that way. And they drove past each other and they both made eye contact. Uh, Brooke made eye contact with Joe. I mean, Brooke made eye contact with Tony, Brooke was driving and Joe was in the passenger seat. Brooke looks at Joe and was like, we in trouble now. And Joe like, nah, it, just drive. So Brooke is driving and Joe is directing her, right? And he like, turn down this street, turn down this street. Well, one of the streets that Joe told Brooke to turn down ended up being a dead end end and they were just like oh god because when i say J uh tony was on they hind parts he was on top of them and so when they when they realized they was at a dead end joe was like you on your own it's like no okay wait i feel like the reason why joe bounced on brooke is because it would have made things worse if tony saw that joe was in the car Versus if he just would have ran into Brooke because he's obsessed with Brooke. He's in love with Brooke. He would never, he probably would never try to kill her, right? That was what was in Joe's impulsive brain. Like he had to make a quick decision. And so when they got to the dead end, he was like, I, I have to go so he doesn't see me. He jumps out the car and runs into the woods. Then... That's when Tony pulls up. 
So when Tony pulls up, he pulls his gun out. His freaking baby's in the car with Brooke. He pulls his gun out and he's banging the gun on the car. Like, open up. I just want to talk to you real quick. I just want to talk. I just want to talk with a gun in your hand, though. Like, come on. I I ain't getting out the car. <laughs> I'm going to say it right there. Like, I can hear you. I can hear you. And, you know, she thought about her baby and she's really scared. And he's like, I just want to talk to you and see why you messing with my brother. Like, that's not cool. And so Joe is watching from afar, but he's in the he's in the woods and he sees that he got a gun and he's banging it. And he's like, I just want to talk. And he sees the person he's in love with, who's Brooke, it is backed into a corner. So he has to protect her. And so he runs out of nowhere and he tries to sneak on Tony. And now the brothers is fighting. Joe and Tony is scuffling for the gun. They wrestling. And what do you know? A gunshot goes off. And of course, it ends up being Joe. Joe got shot in the chest, but he continued to fight. And he looked up at Brooke in the car, who was locked in the car, and said, get out of here. Call 911. And so she pulls off while they're still fighting. And she calls 911, and here it is. A couple more gunshots were shot off, and his brother just told me to call the cops. Seconds after that, the 911 operator gets another call. Here it is. She was screaming, so all I said to her is, I'm coming. And I hung up the phone. She's hysterical. She told me her one son killed her other son. Joe and Tony's mother called her friend and said, my son just got here and he is saying that he killed my other son. And the friend called 911 in a panic and was like, I don't know what's going on, but my friend is saying that her son killed her other son. And by the time they got there, they nobody was there. Nobody was around this car. But there was a trail of blood. And so they followed the trail of blood. And Joe was on somebody's porch in a pool of blood. And he was dead. Um, he had found the strength to crawl to a porch seeking help. Um, and once he made it onto the porch, uh, either they wasn't home or that's when he lost his life. He had no more strength to knock or ring a doorbell or anything. Um, and his mother convinced Tony to go turn himself in. So that same day, Tony went to the police and said, I just killed my brother. So once they went to court, Tony tried to switch it up and was like, oh, it was self-defense. And they like, nah, it didn't take long for them to find him guilty. Because they had, you know, witnesses from friends. Tom, Joe's friends said it. Like, he texted me and said he was going to kill his own brother. And the girlfriend, Brooke, she was able to testify. And it's just, it's it's a sad story on every end. The mother, um, you know, she's the one that told her son where her other son was. And now because of her telling that one is in jail and one is dead. You know, and she has a grandson, but she has to face the woman that got in between her two sons just to be able to see her grandson. So it's sad. It's, it's a sad story. He ended up getting 16 to 34 years in prison. And still to this day, Tony is saying he don't even remember what happened. He don't remember even pulling the trigger. So yeah, that concludes today's story time. Post notification goes to... Thank you so much for having your post notifications on. Shout out to you for being the first to comment on the last video. If you would like a shout out, all you have to do is be the first to comment on the next video. Always remember, it's not happiness that makes you grateful, but it is gratefulness that makes you happy. If you would like to see more true crime stories, then click right here. If you would like to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another video, then click right here. I love you and I will see you guys in the next mukbang.